Hello and greetings to all of you good people across the known world and some of you bad ones too. I am Baron Logan Path Warden. I am your host and this is Ask the Night's Live. Welcome everybody to the show. We have another fantastic one for you today. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump into it. Uh, my guest tonight, we have two y'alls for your pleasure because, you know, if one's good, two's better. So we have uh, y'all Ivan and y'all Waldrick, uh, both from the East. And gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. Oh, no, no. Eldermere. I made a mistake. <laughs> one, one from the East. That, that is, see, this is why I don't do the introductions. Anyway, <laughs> gentlemen, please. <laughs> um, I'm Yarl Ivan. Uh, the whole name, because, you know, I was asked earlier, is uh, Yarl Ivan Ivanov Sin Dmitriev Nukzardikov. The heralds hate my name, but uh, there you go. And uh, Baldr? Hi, I'm uh, Baldr Lehman of Newcastle, Evelyn. Heralds like my name. Um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, I'm from Eldermere. Um, and uh, how, how deep do you want us to go with this, Logan? I don't, I don't even know. Like, do you want us to? Is that it? We're good there. And then you'll. we'll oh, yeah, up? yeah. You're good there. We'll, okay. we'll save the rest for the for my first question. Right. <laughs> so, gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on with us this evening. Uh, I'm glad that you guys came. And uh, man, it's it's already it's already popping off in the comment section. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I see there are a lot of fans uh, in the audience tonight, and I am here for it. Excellent. So, um, gents, if you're ready, we'll just hop right into this. What do you say? Your show. Let's go. All right. Excellent. So, um, the question I like to ask all of my guests very first, straight off, is, uh, so what got you into the SCA? Tell us about, uh, you know, your first event or, or what what drew you in Ivan oh no you're up <laughs> oh, <God damn. laughs> ah, okay so uh, so no kidding at all um, I've been doing the SCA for you know over 35 years now um, I joined the SCA when I was a teenager a young teenager because uh, I was looking for uh, a chainmail style shirt for Halloween. Um, so I had been on the hunt for this and my uncle at the time, uh, knew, uh, mistress Fiona, uh, mistress Fiona Avril O'Connor of Maidenhead, uh, who was the, who was my SCA mom for. Oh no. Uh, it looks like we got him. Oh, uh, it looks like he, he, he lives, he lives in, uh. The woods of Canada. Yeah, I yes, do. Yes, okay. Yes. Am I back? Oh, wait. Nope, he's back. <laughs> Sorry, Yay! guys. Yeah, <laughs> no Price problem. In the rural areas. Um, okay, where did I die? Um, you were the woods, telling us about the chainmail <laughs> the chain okay. shirt. All right, so chainmail oh. shirt. Um, I, I was introduced to Mistress Fiona Avril O'Connor of Maidenhead, who was a, a fixture in the mid-realm, Dragon Herald of the mid-realm, and my SCA mom for the till till she passed uh, some years later, and she woke up the excited kid that I was, um, took me all over the mid realm as her page, and I met some of the most brilliant people I possibly could, and have made friends for a lifetime. And that's pretty much what got me there. Is that uh, it was the friendships for sure. The the, the medieval stuff was fun. Uh, obviously, I didn't fight for a long time, but. Yeah, the friendships I made are, are absolutely what will keep me here until I'm dead. Excellent. Well said. Hard to follow that one. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the uh, guys I grew up with, I had known since basically kindergarten. We all went to, to you know uh, school together and everything. Um, I, was, I was a Rennie. Um, I started going to New York Ren Fair, you know, when it was still just, you know, summer stock, you know, like, not really serious. Uh, Dream Fair out in your neck of the woods uh, in Cali, that was the thing. Um, but that's what I was doing. I was enjoying it. And then somebody was like, why are you wasting money, you know, 
going, you should come work it. And at the same time, when we graduated high school, my friend discovered the SCA when he went away to college. And he's like, dude, drop the Ren fair, come check out what we're doing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pushed him off, kept pushing him off. And then uh, in 92, um, he uh, was home and uh, he's like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? You know, my girlfriend, you know, is coming over. Why don't you and your girlfriend come over? We'll go hang out. I'm like, cool. You know, we'll go to the mall, catch a movie, something like that. Um, and this is his then girlfriend, now wife, and my then girlfriend, now wife. And, um, you know, so we show up at the house and he's like, so you guys not doing anything this weekend? We're like, no. You know, we figured we'd just go to the mall and hang out. He's like, no, you're going to your first event. Period. <laughs> Here's a tent. Here's a sleeping bag. You know, like all the, you know, like you just wear your Renfair garb. And we were like, we're going to an event. And it was Father's Day weekend, uh, 1992. It was uh, just, uh, it was true magic. You know, it was like, you always remember your first event, but it was a border war back then. You know, they still did the, you know, zip code border wars. And um, it had everything. It had, you know, heavy to watch and fencing and bardic and they competed over the zip codes with all that stuff and then while we were there somebody's like so you guys going to go to penzik and we're like what's a penzik <laughs> okay you know and uh you know from you know father's day weekend in june and then we were there for penzik and that was penzik 21 and uh we haven't missed one since and uh you know it's just been uh love you know just all the time awesome uh -oh. <laughs> oh oh yes 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 okay wow oh, now much we better. can think again <laughs> much better. Uh, so for every everyone who was wondering what that was about uh i was warned that the uh the hats would come off you know after the first question so fair enough Okay. Um, ah, all right. So this is primarily a show um, about knights, knighthood, and uh, you know, jogging down the path for basically to answer the questions for unbelts. And one of the questions that we always get uh, from most of our unbelted fighters is, um, "What's your favorite weapons form and why?" And then. I always throw on the caveat of what weapons form do you think a brand new fighter should learn first? Weapons form to learn first, whatever they want, really. Um, I know there are a lot of people like sword and board, you know, no, um, whatever you want. I know guys that picked up a pole arm and that's been their true love and you know, yes, weapons depth is a thing and you should have it, but it's not, uh, you know, worry about that down the line. If you're just getting into, you know, the game we play and the sport that comes along with it, you know, find your passion with whatever, you know, whatever you want. Um, what was the first part, uh, first question? And what is your favorite weapons form to fight? Sword and shield. Uh, right before I got into the SCA, I shattered the right side of my body skiing. So, um, sword and shield was what I had to do because that would protect, uh, protect me, you know, um, you know, so. Okay. Um, my favorite weapons form is actually two sword. Uh, I love two stick. I, uh, I stopped doing two stick because uh, for two reasons. One, it was easy until you went against a good opponent. Um, and I mean, by good opponent, I'm talking like a top tier opponent. Um, so I felt like I was, you know, I won't say abusing, but definitely um, inflicting undue pain and hardship on newer fighters. Um, and uh, obviously, it's it wasn't as effective a style against those who are, uh, you know, better at fighting at, at that level. Um, anyways, so that's that's neither here nor there. That's my favorite. Um, Sword and Board is a very close second. Uh, I got into that very heavily when I was uh, King's Champion for uh, or Queen's Champion, sorry, for uh, Duchess Ryland and I and I 
I bought in hook, line, and sinker, and I and I I don't look back. And that's actually pretty much what I won my crown in. Um, as for what I think everybody should start with, um, I I kind of agree with Ivan in that in that we should let people do whatever they want to. Um, but I'm I'm still a firm believer that from a, an authorization perspective and from a helping new fighters get used to fighting like logically sword and shield should be one of the first ones um, because it offers you the most protection while you're learning it offers you the ability to understand the concept behind movement um, directions angles and uh, and sword strikes and technique and body mechanics while not putting you out you know to get beat up or or, or hurt from making a mistake a, a shield gives you a lot of a lot of freebies to, if you're out of position or if you've made a mistake a lot of times, it gives you a lot of freebies to protect most of these soft bits that really suck when they get hit. Um, a lot of other weapons forms give you no mercy whatsoever. So uh, I'm a firm believer to, to a degree that I usually encourage new fighters to start with sword and shield at the very least until they authorize. And after that, you can never pick that stuff up again. But it, it makes it easier for me to fight you with a sword and shield because I know that you're at least somewhat protected and you're less likely to get arm pitted repeatedly. Fair point. Very fair point. All right, gents. So let's go. Um, we're, now I'm, <laughs> I have to tell you this. <laughs> I, I, we're going <laughs> to, you guys are so smexy. It's true. Um, we love you, Colin. I, I, ha I have to tell you this, you know, our viewers give us the absolute best questions uh, way better than the ones that I, I ask in the beginnings here. Um, so I just want you to prepare yourselves because there are some heavy hitters coming up <laughs> from, from, from some of your favorite people. I'll just tell you that. But once again, that doesn't come until the second half of the show and you still got 15 minutes more uh, putting up with my questions. Um, so if any of you guys out there have a question for these two fantastic gentles, uh, please go ahead, drop them in the comments and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try and get to as many as we can. All right, so back to my more mundane questions. Um, so <clears throat> what was uh, your biggest hurdle as an unbuilt? <laughs> Uh, this is easy for me. Um, I got maturity, 100% maturity. Um, I, I, I've been in the SCA for many, many years at that point. Uh, however, my problem was, is that I'd also been in the military at that point for almost like, like before I got, before I got into fighting, I've been in the military for six years. So I was a fit, um, crazy army guy, paratrooper with no fear. Um, and, I also had a military humor and military humor works really well with military guys. It's <laughs> not work very well with anybody else. So um, I was the first guy in armor at every event. I was taunting people to come fight me. Usually people that could easily kick my butt. Um, and uh, a lot of people saw that as arrogance versus just, I wanted to pick fights. I wanted to fight with everybody. I wanted to get pushed hard and hard and hard and go at it. Um, so for a long time, I'm absolutely confident that's what held me back. Well, that and the alcohol, because I used to drink and I get very huggy when I'm drunk. Very, uh, I'm not a fighter when I'm drunk, I'm very huggy. And, uh, and it's very- That's how we very met, very actually. Huggy. Uh -huh, it's true. Um, I was ham, anyways. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's honestly, I would say arguably maturity was my biggest, was my biggest fault. Um, and it took me a long time to get there. Uh, it did. Um, because I, I'm still not mature. Um, I've just learned to be smarter about when I'm immature, I guess, time and place. Right. Um, and, uh, and I recognize the difference between um, the fun challenge and sounding like a dick challenge. Um, I, I finally recognized the messaging, um, the people that I would say it to, understood where I was coming from because we were close and they totally knew what I was saying. The people that didn't know me thought that arrogant shit just called, you know, Duke Aaron a bitch and to come fight him. And, you know, <laughs> Duke Aaron understood what I was doing. The other guy, less so. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's it. 
for me, um, you know, basically my own, my own head. Um, you know, when I first got into the SCA, um, like one of the first uh, groups that we joined uh, was uh, a clan of mercenaries. And, uh, you know, we just screwed around. We had fun. You know, we were getting paid at Pensac War to fight. And, uh, you know, we weren't really doing much. And then when um, uh, I met my knight, he was prince at the time, um, Darius uh, Omega Known, um, you know, he took me on. Um, and he believed that I could step on the path and walk it. Um, but I needed to find that and realize that for myself as well. Um, so I had somebody that believed I could do it. Um, the next big hurdle was believing that I could do it. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, well said both of you. Um, so I, I want to dig into this just a little bit more. Um, you know, Baldrick, you said that, uh, you know, you were always the first guy in armor and jumping on the field, uh, and calling people out. Um, so the, this question is, is that something that you would suggest, um, for an unbelt or better yet, how, how best can an unbelted fighter get noticed? Do you think that's a, you know, not maybe exactly that, but do you think that's a, a, a good strategy? Uh, One million percent. Um, a hundred percent or a million percent. If you're the first guy out there and you're looking for fights and you're asking for fights, don't go at the same road I did, which was, you know, taunt people or, you know, call them out or, or you know, because that's, well, okay, do that with me because I'll a hundred percent buy in and you'll have my vote instantly. Uh, however, um, there's a lot of people that are going to take that personal. So, um, that's that's something that I think that's that I've recognized from um, since I've been knighted is that that's what I look for and what a lot of people look for is if I'm standing around in between tournament rounds and I'm looking for pickups and nobody's coming to, to do pickups with me that tells me that either a there are people that are injured or or trying to save themselves for the next round or whatever I get it but it also tells me that there's a there's a, a lack of drive um, in some cases it, it does concern me. Um, I should not be bored in between rounds. There should be somebody wanting to come fight with me. Um, and sometimes I'll, de I'll, I'll decline. I'll decline because either I'm broken, uh, I'm fighting injured because I'm stupid or, or, uh, or whatever. But I, I do make my effort to come out whenever anyone wants to do pickups with me to, to have those. And if, even if I do bow out, I'm going to remember that person came for me. And I'm going to try to take that time to go find them later. And they're going to be here at the front of the brain versus the back of the brain where they're going to like, you know, they're going to fall off after I've had an extra beer. Um, <laughs> a thousand percent. Be that guy. Be that girl. Be the first person on the list. Be the first person challenging. Ask the questions. Even if it's not in, in armor, say, you know, hey, I watched you fight this person and I saw you do this. How did you do that? Um, and or vice versa. You know, what do you recommend? Have you watched me fight lately? And if I haven't, I will start. Because that that pokes your brain and it and it puts you here and that's never a bad place to be when you're talking to the ship because the first thing that'll happen is like hey what do you think of so and so and it'd be like who versus hey what do you think of so and so yeah they came out to me they 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 wanted to do some some rounds with me you know they're they're making progress they're doing this and doing that that's that's honestly what it comes down to it's a I hate to say it because it's it, it makes me feel dirty. Um, <laughs> the shiv is a politics game to some degree, um, in, insofar as if you're in the front brain, if you're in the frontal lobe, people are going to pay attention. If you're not, and you're, and you're the person that's, and you're the person that's like off doing something else or has an excuse to not fight that day, whether it's a good one or not, because we remember that you didn't fight that day, regardless, you know, it, it, it hurts you. It really does. And it, and it sucks. It sucks because sometimes you're doing the right thing for you. The good news is, is that if you do that right thing that one time where you weren't fighting, we have a short memory. The next event where you call us out, that's what we're going to remember. The next event that you came by and talked to us and asked the questions, we're going to remember. That's the piece that matters. So that when we have that counsel and somebody says, what do you think of so-and-so? Yeah. The last time I saw them fight, they whooped, you know, um, lady so-and-so's butt or, or lady so-and-so kicked, uh, you know, sir so-and-so's butt. Or I, I felt like I was having a rough day and that person made me 
eat it. Perfect. You know, like <laughs> I've had bad days or I've had even reasonable days to me and I couldn't lay stick on somebody. I'm like, all right, you're doing something right or I'm doing something wrong, but brilliant because <laughs> that means you're on the right path, really. Excellent. You have any uh, you feelings on the subject, y'all, Arvin? Um, yeah, pretty much the same. Um, Self-advocacy. You know, you want it, go get it. You know, come hunt the nights. Um, be the last person off the field. Um, in the East, one of the things that we complain about is, is that the nights aren't staying out long enough for the unbelts to fight them. Um, and uh, leading up to uh, before we shut down, that was actually with a shift that there were people staying in to allow the unbelts to fight. Um, and that's important because, you know, if we're not there for them to hunt, there's no, there, there's not going to get that recognition. So, um, but yeah, we're no, self-advocacy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, go get it. Um, come talk, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, just a casual conversation, you know, um, afterwards on a cool down period, you know, uh, how'd you throw that shot? How'd you get the shot in? Uh, I was watching your bout with so-and-so, um, all these things, you know, um, will again, put you in the, the front lobe of, you know, Oh yeah, I remember so-and-so came up to me and was talking to me about that. Um, they're, they, they have the fire, they have the passion, they have the drive. And, um, and that's what, you know, we, we still walk the path. We're constantly walking that path. So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There's one more thing I wanted to bring up, and, it's, and I think it's absolutely critical. If you're broken, if you're hurt, if you're healing, don't fight. Honestly, we'll remember where you were before you got hurt. We don't need to know the details. Let someone know. Let your knight know or whatever. Let somebody know what's going on. But for, for please, for God's sake, don't fight heal, get better, don't muscle through, be smarter. Because I can say with absolute certainty that I have long-term injuries, minor ones, mind you, like the Army didn't help any more with that than otherwise. But I 100%, <laughs> there are times when I shouldn't have fought that I tried to, and somebody finally said, all right, stupid, get off the list. Please don't do that because it's it's not doing you any good. Even we don't think, oh, that guy's tough. He must muscle through. No, we think you're stupid. Don't do that because we really do. Don't do that. Get healthy yeah. again. Come back better because if you're hurt, you're doing two things to yourself. Once you're damaging yourself more and two, you're teaching yourself, your body bad habits because you're compensating. Whether you think you are or not, your body's compensating to that injury, which means when you do get healthy again, if you ever do, you're going to be doing dumb shit with your body because you learned that habit because your left hip didn't turn anymore because you did something dumb. Please don't. That's I, I can't emphasize that enough. We understand because we've all been hurt at some point. Some of us took the time to heal. Some of us <laughs> did. Some of us did not. Um, but we all recognize we should have. And we yeah. will recognize you accordingly when it's your time. Yeah. And also in, on that, too, is at an event, if you're gassed, don't come fight because – those fights, you know you're gassed. I don't know you're gassed. All I know is is that I wiped the floor with you. Um, and that's what I'm going to remember. Um, so, you know, if you're injured or too tired, just, you know, come up, have a conversation. Hey, I really want to fight you. What's the next event that I can fight you? That I'll remember. So. Excellent. And I, I have to wholeheartedly agree. And I will throw my two cents in here, which I do every once in a while. Um, if you are hurt, um, you know, yeah, you definitely need to heal up. There are ways to stay visible when you can't fight. There's plenty of other things to do, um, like walk up to people and talk to them. With your not in armor, you can explain, well, I, I would be fighting today, but, uh, you know, I'm healing up. And, you know, <clears throat> most of the shit that I know will, they love to talk about fighting. Um, the side of the field, you know, or I don't know, do help out the heralds, bear water so that the shift can see that you are more than just a stick jock. 
Um, that's important too, in my opinion. All Sorry. right, gents. <laughs> um, so uh, we're, we're running out of time for my questions, but I've got to ask you guys this one because it sounds like a really, really juicy one. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Um, I was uh, on the Tiger Thrones at the time, um, and uh, he uh, showed up to Burka, and it was the Friday night uh, before the event, and um, apparently he was on the nervous side. I didn't realize that. And um, I had this giant Muppet, because um, he was Prince, and um, like mug me. And, you know, he was, he was attached to my hip for that night. And, um, it's a giant hotel conference center. So we, you know, now I, now I have this, oops, sorry, there we go. This guy over here, you know, attached to me, snockered, he had his retainers and I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I had him. This is, you know, he, he's, he's now mine. He followed me home. Mom, can I keep him? Uh, and, uh. You know, um, and we had an amazing time. Um, and then uh, I think the next time was uh, Gulf Wars, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, shenanigans uh, pursued from there. Yeah, it was just uh, an amazing time. And, you know, I have a brother for life. <laughs> life is good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's, Got anything uh, to add? Well, so I'm sorry. Berka was my, oh, I was going to say, Berka was my first event <clears throat> as Prince. Uh, I was the brand new baby prince. Um, my lady, uh, the princess, had gone to an event in her kingdom, and I had gone to Burka so I could initially sort of have a conversation with some Maurice Kingdom folks to, because I was about to be war king. And I wanted to get a feel for our Eastern allies and sort of see what was going on. Um, and I'd never been to Burka, and I wanted to fight a lot. Uh, however, um, I was very nervous. I was very nervous. It was my first first foreign event, but also my very first event since putting on the, the coronet. So I was a little, a little excited. So I, uh, I, we got there the Friday night and I proceeded to drink like I meant it. And I mean, I'm not talking a little bit. I was, uh, I was <laughs> three sheets to the wind. I was hanging out with a bunch of people that I did know and hanging out with a bunch of people I didn't. Uh, thankfully, uh, Duchess Adriel was, uh, on my entourage and she followed me around and kept me out of distinct trouble. Um, I spent a lot of time, uh, wondering about, um, and, uh, and, and meeting everybody and having a ton of fun, uh, and everybody welcomed me with open arms. And I, I remember getting called into East Kingdom court because we were all, I was all the sitting royalty. And I remember walking up and, uh, you know, I haven't invited me up. And so I walk in and of course we decided that my wife and I decided that no matter what we had decided, we were not going to declare until their majesty's elder mirror had stepped down because we didn't want to, you know, take the shine off. That's, that's a big deal to us. We, we were pretty confident, but we weren't going to do anything. So we had called into court to, to come to court. And um, just before us, Her Highness Atlantia had declared for the East. So she got the big, Woo! and of course, I've come in afterwards, and I'm like, we're not declaring, we're not declaring, we're not declaring. Of course, I'm, <laughs> we, 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 you know, we, we have a hug on the stage kind of thing. And I turn around, I'm like, how do I follow that shit? And so I think I, I announced something along the lines of, you know, uh, hello, I'm you know Prince Baldur from Eldermere. You guys have been fantastic. Your hospitality has been amazing. Uh, I can't thank their majesties or highnesses enough for, for uh, showing me such a good time. Um, for all of you I met last night, um, if you'd be so kind as to come by and see me later and tell me what happened, because I don't remember any of it. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a giant, you know, a giant how like, you know, cheer and that kind of thing. And, and then we proceeded to drink gin um, on the dais for the rest of court. Ivan was so kind as to let everybody leave before the main Greggle did so we could pee first. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, uh, you know, Ivan and Matilde, uh, we have had a chance to spend a ton of time with either Ed Penzik visiting briefly. Um, without question, we, we've, we've bonded exponentially. And uh, the, the people from the East that we've met have treated us just brilliantly. So, um, yeah, we're definitely brothers for life. There's no question. There was when when we talked initially about coming onto the show, and you know, we, we had the first conversation. The first person I thought of was Ivan. There was no question in my mind who I was going to ask first. Awesome. I'll just say her and blush. <laughs> well, you do it so well. 
It's true. All right. So, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, we have now reached the halfway point of this fantastic show. Um, and it's time for the viewer questions. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to give a quick little shout out to one of our huge supporters, um, <clears throat> Raven of Raven's Weavings. Uh, if you have not seen her stuff, go check her out on Facebook. Uh, she takes commissions. She does amazingly beautiful uh, woven belts and trim. Uh, so if you need something and you have like a particular idea in your head, you talk to her and then she shows you like, oh, so it sounds like you wanted this pattern. And then all of a sudden, there it is. Uh, the next thing you know, you, you have a a a beautiful handmade item. So go check her out um, and give her money because she's awesome. Uh, I've, I've commissioned her several times so far and I have not been upset once. So thank you to Raven's Weavings for supporting the show and supporting us. Okay, guys. Um, now, now comes the real questions, the good questions. Um, oh, I, I think my internet is going. I just uh, we're getting some static. I'm gonna have to uh, good just get. Cal, <laughs> Cal, get all that. Fix that. Fix it up. All right. So, uh, our first question comes from um, who is this? This is um, oh the Honorable Lord Thorne from the East. I think that's correct. Yes. Uh, and the question is: After reigning once. Do you want to fight in crown and reign again? Why or why not? Uh, so uh, it's a resounding yes for me, 100%. Um, two reasons. Uh, one, I I absolutely had a fantastic time the first time. Um, and I look forward to doing it one more time. Um, I want to make my wife a duchess. I want to be a duke. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, <laughs> and this is where I'm going to say the unpopular stuff. Uh, it frustrates me when people do more than two reigns because we have so many fantastic people that could do a great job on the throne. And if you're super mega duke who can win a crown whenever they feel like entering, stay out. Go fight something else. Let other people do this. Um, I'm going to do one more. Literally one more. And unless something like unsubstantiated happens and I can't even imagine we're not doing it again. It's not because I don't think that I can do a good job because I, I, I'm i confident that my lady will make me look good no matter what I do. Um, it's because there are way cool people out there that maybe, maybe they won't meet the super Duke level, but maybe they will do a phenomenal job serving our kingdom. Give them that chance. You know, if you've reigned six or seven times, go find something else, go find another hobby. Um, or just teach everybody <laughs> else to become super dukes like you. Brilliant. But let other people reign. I, I, I would love to see some type of system where first reign, second reign, great. Third reign, you got to wait two years. Fourth reign, you got to wait three years. Five <laughs> reign, you got to wait six, four years, five years, six years, whatever. Exponentially increase it so that by the time the person can reign again, they're 80. Not going to be popular with all the Dukes. I'm going to get my ass handed to me the next time I'm on a list somewhere. I'm certain of it. I will it. That's just my view. And it, it's only mine. I don't speak for the is that a disclaimer we got coming up. I do not Wait, speak Cal. for the SGA Inc. Pretty large. Cal, throw up, That's throw just up me. the banner. Yeah, there, there we go. There you go. There you go. The I'll just leave it, leave it right there. Yeah. That's, that's 100% how I feel about it. So, yes, one more time. Brilliant. And that's why, because people treated us golden. We had a great time, and I 100% love this kingdom. Like, I love my kingdom. There's no question. <laughs> awesome, excellent. Oh wow! So um, our reign was uh, contentious um, at best, and um, there have been better reigns, and there have been worse reigns. Um, so when we stepped down, we were very much. We were done for the moment. We were very much, uh, no, we're good, you know. And I know the whole, you know, once a fluke, twice a duke, you know, I go and consider, you know, no, I did it right the first time, so I don't need to do it again. Um, and we, we stood we stood by that. And um, But at the end of the day, you know, we're the figureheads of your good time. And um, do I want to do it again? If I win, I win. 
Um, the first, uh, my first reign with the crown that I won, I didn't go in it to win it. I just went in to go and not lose any of my fights. Um, and uh, we hosted the last East Kingdom crown tournament and I entered it. And a lot of people lost their minds because they're like, oh my God, you said you weren't ever going to do it again. I'm like, it's in my backyard. It's something, it, this is <laughs> this is our fun time. This is what we do. Um, so, you know, if I do it, I do it. If I don't, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, um, it's a game. Let's have fun. So. Absolutely. Well said. Absolutely. Well said both of you. All right. So, uh Oh, uh Oh, this is from Duke Fleeg out here in the West. He says, Baldrick, if they <laughs> come to hand you your ass, hand them theirs <laughs> with a serving of fava beans. <laughs> and this is why that man is a classic. Now, is that fava beans? You mean ankle, ankle, head, the winning technique, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so uh, our next question comes from, oh, geez, see? And this is why I don't read, I, I don't herald because I can't do names. Uh, this is Baron Mail. Ewan. Ewan, Mac. You can't. Ashudi? 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 Oh, should be cold. Order the Pelican yeah. from the East. I'm sure Try you're milk. a wonderful person. Um, so the question is this far into the SEA, what keeps you excited? What do you support in others to keep them excited? It's the people. And, you know, I've listened to past episodes and it really just comes back down to it's the people, it's the family that we create. Um, uh, the borders are shut down. I miss, I miss him, him. There he is. Um, you know, <laughs> it, 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 there's, I don't miss, I don't miss people. I miss persons. Um, I'm an introvert. So, um, yeah, um, it's the family that we create and there's so much in the SCA. Um, there's more than just the fighting. Um, that's the big flashbang. Um, and, uh, just, if, if we can't fight, find something to, to do different um, and just find your passion, find, find what keeps it fun for you. Um, and that's what keeps me coming back, learning new things, uh, meeting new people. Um, you know, that's about it. Damn it. All my answers. God, you suck. <laughs> I mean, I love you. Um, yeah, no, um, Ivan's right. Um, so there, so the, I would, I would answer it in just a slightly different manner. So what keeps me excited 100% is challenging myself on the list. That is what, that, that is what gives me the stiffy. That's the, that's the hundred percent what I'm going for 99.9% .9 of the time is testing myself against all the different people. And I don't care if I get my ass handed to me or not. Um, I found a, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna even try his name because I can't remember now. But I was at um, uh, what's what's that event that um, um, goes on the the fighting day there the in the shoe factory. Um, oh, um, Timothy's. Uh, yeah, that one. Timothy's. Duke Tim's um, right. Adult Swim. Sorry. Adult Swim. That's right. So I was at Adult Swim. And uh, at the time, um, I was sort of hanging out, chilling out with a bunch of people, having some good fights and really enjoying myself. And uh, uh, Count Steiner, who uh, was king at the time, introduced me to this guy from this Duke from Montier. Uh, the first shot this Duke threw hit me on the cup. The second shot was inside thigh. The third shot was inside, inside thigh. And I was like, dude, what did I do to you? Like, <laughs> like seriously, what did I did I do something to your mother? Like, why would you do this to me? Um, and it was just, it was pure fluke. It was different styles. And I, and I, and I had a chance to fight him a little more. And I, I, I don't think I even came close to like returning the favor. A, cause I, I'm not really, okay. Yeah. I'm that kind of fighter, but I didn't. Um, but I mean, I love that challenge. I love to learn fights. I love to push myself in that capacity. So for me, that's 100% hands down. The excitement factor for me is, is that fight all the time. Um, I fought Gareth Squire out in Gagetown, New Brunswick. Uh, I was down there for a course, 
and uh, he had a wicked butt wrap. Not even kidding you. Like an epic butt wrap. And he got me with it like three times. And on the third time, I figured out the timing. And I was like, all right, dude, that shot's brilliant. I absolutely have streaks on my ass. Well done. I've got your <laughs> timing down now. Don't throw it anymore. <laughs> It got into his rotation, so he wasn't. So he like a couple more pass later, he tried it again. I blocked it and I cut him across the tricep, and he was like, "Ooh!" And I'm like, "I can be taught," <laughs> you know. Like um, about two shots later, he tried it again without even thinking about it. Block, bam! And I, I think I creased him in the uh, the crook of the elbow, and he like dropped his sword. And I'm like, so, anyways. I love those games, and that's that's that piece of that. Um, as far as uh, what I recommend other people do, find that. Find that spark. Find that thing that makes you excited, makes you go, and then eat it. Jump on it. Become, Make it your bitch. Like, 100% dive into that and own it. Like, become the best person at whatever that niche is yours. I don't know what it is. Um if it's fighting, great. I'll do my very best to get you there. I, I will. It doesn't matter who you are, whose squire you are. If you're not a squire, it doesn't matter. You come find me. I will do my best to make you better. I promise. If, until you can kick my ass, I'll keep making you better. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be rapier. It could be archery. It could be calligraphy and illumination. That shit is epic. Like, epic. My the most terrifying thing I've done in my life is put my name on a scroll because I was terrified of screwing something up. I spent 45 minutes practicing in my royalty room writing seven letters because I was terrified of screwing up the artistry that was that scroll. So yep. find that magic and make it. I, I, I embroidered a hood. <laughs> I embroidered a hood because I could. Find that magic and just and I'll promote it. I'll support it. You want help with it? I'll buy it. I don't even care. Find what magic for you and then jump all over. It. Enjoy it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I'm going to slip in one of my other questions real quick before we get back to the viewer questions. Um, how important is it to you um, that someone be you know the, the well-rounded knight? Should a knight be more than just, you know, prowess on the field? Should he play an instrument, be able to sing or dance or, you know, play chess? Is There's a, a lot of, uh, with a lot of my guests, there's, there's been a lot of, not really disagreement, but just different thoughts on whether or not that's important. Um, so, yes, she or he should be. Um, I'm... I, I full believe that, okay, they don't necessarily have to have an art and a service and a, and a, and a, and a. Peers are, peers are created equal. A laurel's the same as a knight, is the same as a pelican, is the same as a, as a mod. You know, these are all peers within our, within our society. Um, there is generally an onus on a knight that they are expected to have some form of all the other things. And I think to a degree, in order for you to become a knight, you have to serve in some capacity, whether that be, at the very least, instruction, maybe marshalling. Um, you know, should they have those other skills? I, I believe they should uh, to a degree. Like, I, I love the idea that, like, to me, they're, they're more peer-like in that capacity because they have those other skills. Um, and they're more likely to get my vote. And if they have those other skills, as long as their prowess is at X level, you know, I'm prepared to, you know, if they get these other skills up here, you know, that sort of tends to deliver things and that, that vote could change from a no to a meet, wait to a yes. Um, however, I'm also of a mind that if a guy's prowess or a girl's prowess is like way up here, I need to see something here. It doesn't necessarily need to be here, but it definitely needs to be, you know, it has to show. Um, Count Sarnak, who was a, who, who's a, a knight who lived in our kingdom and passed away some years ago. Uh, him and I were drunk one night at an event. And I said, so what do you think? Where am I at? How do you feel about me? And he goes, I've been drinking, dude. Are you sure you want this? And I was like, <laughs> funny, I've been drinking too. 
hit me. I'm an army guy. You're not going to hurt my feeling. You know, I only have one. It's rage most of the time. Um, he said, you know, I don't see you as a knight. I 100% I think you're a good fighter. I don't picture you as a peer yet. That's I, I can't put a label as in, you know, your boots suck or, you know, your garb is junk or your armor looks like sport armor. I says I can't put that into that that qualitative sort of quantitative, you know, metric. I don't see you as a peer yet. And I was like, fair. All right. So that's something I got to work on. And I respected that answer. That's the thing is you have to be a peer in that capacity. That makes sense. Absolutely. I came out of a stable where um, the focus was the fighting. Um, and that's not to discount any of the other stuff um, because we're all doing things, helping each other, teaching, leading. Um, all of those things are coming along with it. But the concept uh, where I listen to a lot of older uh, longer in the SCA um, nights where it's like, no, I want to see you dance or I want to see you play chess. That's not, you know, really a focus for me. Um, maybe it's an Eastern thing. I don't know. Um, I have a couple squires. I have one squire that's uh, an incredible artist and, you know, doing amazing uh, jewelry and teaching. And he's gotten into uh, CNI and uh, aspect, you know, he's made a couple scrolls. Now I have another squire. He does, he's, he's service oriented, you know, he's uh, our local seneschal for the uh, group. And, you know, so we all do stuff. Um, you know, I taught myself, you know, armoring. I taught myself uh, metals, you know, whether it's the jewelry or regular, you know, metal smithing. You know, it's like, it's it's hard. Um, yes, we, we're all, you know, to be rounded, to, uh, to serve and to help out and to teach and, uh, you know, um, the humility. But... I never like listen to Pelicans go, Ooh, but do they fight? What's their fighting like? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you know, um, so yes, we're all equal. Um, but for the laurels, you don't hear that either, but what weapons forms do they have? You know, you don't really hear that. So, um, yes. Be rounded, be smart, you know, lead, teach, um, learn stuff. Don't be afraid to learn stuff. Um, ask the questions, you know, go do stuff. Enjoy all of the aspects of the SCA. But when it comes to walking the path, show me that you can, uh, a metric that, or yeah, uh, 50% of the ship, 50% of the time. Show me that. So. Well said. Excellent. Um, so we've got so many really good questions in here, but we only have about 10 minutes left. Uh, unless you guys don't mind going over a little bit because there's some there's some juicy stuff in here. Um, so, I have two more beers. Oh, we got time. <laughs> okay, excellent. So um, I wanted to get to this one. Um, this is from, uh, I believe it's his Royal Majesty Britannicus of Eldamere. Yes. Uh, what are your favorite events for showcasing unbelts in your kingdom? And thank you, Your Majesty, for the question. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, thank you. Um, showcasing for unbelts. We have Burka. Um, Burka is in my opinion, not really a tournament. It's a bear pit. It's uh, a few hours long and uh, it's a meat grinder. Um, if your bout's lasting longer than five seconds, you need to get out and get back online. Um, <laughs> no, it's like, I'm, I'm not kidding because that's how it is. Um, so is it a good, um, a lot of people use it as a good uh, gauge? I don't um, because it's it's a meat grinder. It's a great practice. Um, 
uh, we have some good tournaments um, that you know, like you know, Mudthaw, which would have been this coming weekend. Um, you know, so there's a lot of good tournaments like that. Um, we have Ducal Challenges. Um, Brendan and Keelan's uh, Ducal Challenge is a fun one that incorporates the arts as well as the uh, the fighting. You know, so there's there's stuff like that. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a ton, and I'll catch shit for it at some point. But <laughs> it's not that kind of show. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so for me, I, I would say for, for unbelts, adult swim, uh, hands down. Oh um, yeah. Adult swim, but that's not in our kingdom. It did, he didn't say in our kingdom. He said, what event? Oh, is it in our kingdom? Yeah. <laughs> womp, womp. Oh no. But I agree with in you. your kingdom. Oh, okay. Maybe it is in our kingdom. Okay. I'll leave. All right. So <laughs> but adult swim, um, definitely adult swim. hundred percent adult swim. Um, now in our kingdom proper, I would argue. So we have a we have a prestige tourney called Lady Mary, which is uh, it's near and dear to my heart because we talked briefly about Fiona being my inspiration in the SCA when I first started. Uh, her mother's name was Mary. Lady Mary tournament is based on her. She was a an epitome of virtue. I knew her. I'm probably one of the few people around long enough to have known her from our from our kingdom. Um, she was a wonderful lady, um, and uh, so the tournament's named after her. So. It is probably the prestige tournament in Eldermere, Um, and that is the, the tournament that everybody's watching to see where people place. And uh, I think from my perspective, uh, it's what I like to see because uh, not only is there a lot of pomp and ceremony and circumstance involved, and there's a lovely procession, it's, it's probably the equivalent of crown without the the suffering the year after. Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Your Majesty. Please don't let me. Please let me fight crown next. Um, it's it's absolutely a, a very very prestige tourney, and you will absolutely see the best of the fighters. So, um, depending on the, where an umbelt sits, really depends on where they sit when we're having conversations, because it is not a one and done tournament. You have to fight well throughout the day, and it'll show. Um, that being said, um, we used to have a Barris's slash Osis's barroom brawl back in the day. Uh, Osis is a, a duke from our kingdom who passed away in a car accident many years ago. Um, but he was a he was a diehard stick jock. He was king of the mid-realm a number of times. Super cool. King of Eldermere a number of times. Super cool cat. And he was Thor personified. He was six <laughs> foot tall, bulletproof, big construction guy, very strong, fought two stick, intimidating as hell. Like, But brilliant. And they used to do an event. Um, that was called Osis Barroom Brawl. It was pretty much just fighting from start to finish at the end of the night. The feast was basically chicken wings it, and beer, of course, because beer is everywhere. Um, <laughs> but it was 100% just a, it was like the Eldemir small version of Adult Swim in that there was classes and then there was just beats and it was phenomenal. It was a great event. I think uh, I think people got tired of running it because there was a lot involved for a very short you know time frame. Um, and nobody was to take up the reins to jump on it kind of thing, which I think in our hindsight being what it was, somebody needs to get off their butt and I might have to talk to some people. Yeah, that's that's my answer is that if we're talking kingdom only, <laughs> versus barroom brawl. If we're talking like worldwide, adult swim. Yeah, awesome. Adult swim. Very, very cool. All right, uh, I, I got three more that I have to get to uh, before the end of the night or the question askers will kill me. So, um, oh, oh, so this one is from one of uh, my most favorite people in the entire world, um, and that is Contessa Fortune. Um, and this fortune. one is, this is specifically for y'all, Ivan. And I wish she was here because she would say it in, in the, the perfect, like, voice of hers. Um, and she says, dearest y'all, Ivan, are you Santa? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my monitors now, is uh, Murder Santa. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 now that you <laughs> uh, now that you you've heard the question, you, you can hear her in her voice saying that. Can't yeah yeah yes yeah. Uh, yes yes. Thank you for the the question. Okay, um, so this is the serious question of the evening. 
Are you ready? Can you guess who it's from? No, she didn't. She did. <laughs> okay. Um, from our very own Duchess Helga of the West, what is the difference between justice and accountability? How do these things play a role in the SCA and as knights? Oh, I hear it. I get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the difference between justice and accountability? Um, accountability comes from within. Um, the justice is what is um, meted out against you. Um, is my short answer. Um, to recognize, you know, uh, your own accountability uh, in a situation. And um, sometimes the uh, the justice is uh, not always uh, to the being tried on the uh, in the court of Facebook, so to speak. <laughs> Excellent, excellent question. Um, so y'all, Bardrick, you can either answer that question or Her Grace has sent in a second question if you'd like that one. Well, um, my answer for this one's gonna be pretty quick anyways. Um, I'm a Go firm believer it. that justice, justice is, is um, handled from without. So it's somebody else uh, administering versus accountability, which is where you personally have to own whatever that was. Um, I, that's, I think to me, that's the biggest difference. And you can absolutely have justice inflicted upon you and accept accountability and, and own it. Um, and, or you can have justice inflicted upon you because you choose not to have accountability. And I think to me, that's the biggest difference is that uh, as a knight, um, it's our job, honestly, to be accountable for our actions but in some cases to support the meeting out of justice. We can't necessarily inflict justice. We can absolutely support the pursuit of justice. But as a knight, I can't decide that that person is going to suffer because I'm a firm believer that, that they need justice. Um, but what I can do is I can support a victim. I can support an investigation. I can encourage you know, uh, justice in an instance where it happens. And I can encourage accountability. So I can speak to someone and say, you know, you need to own this. You made a mistake. Uh, and as a squire, um, I did that where uh, a knight from our kingdom made some mistakes in a tournament against another knight in our kingdom. Um, they both actually made mistakes, but one in particular made less mistakes than he had in the past. And so I, I had a talk with him and it was a talk that I was a little worried about because here I am talking to a knight and I'm just, I'm just a red belt. But I said, brother, you, you, you embarrass yourself tonight. We were friends, but I said, you embarrassed yourself tonight because you dropped to his level and you should not do that. You know better. And he goes, and he 100% looked at me and he went, yeah. And see, I wasn't a knight, but I recognized that he would be able to speak to me in that capacity and sort of say, this is accountability thing. This is, the, you're, you're, you, you diminished your reputation tonight and you should not have done that because you're better than that. And he 100% acknowledged it. That's the difference between accountability and justice to me is that we can support the justice pursuit. We can support someone accepting accountability. We can enforce justice. There's there's mechanisms in place to do that, um, but we can't enforce that. But in the case of accountability, we absolutely need to be accountable and we need to encourage accountability amongst not just our brothers and sisters, but anyone who needs that kind of gentle nudge and sort of go, you know, when you did that thing, that was bad. and. <laughs> at the same token, you need to be able to accept that when somebody comes up to you and goes, hey, Baldrick, that night when you were at like the Ask the Nights thing and you said that stupid thing, that was bad. <laughs> you have to go, yeah, it was. You know, that's that's really what it comes down to. So that was it. Sorry. Longer than I wanted. No, no. Absolutely. No, no. You, that's perfect. Yeah, thank, thank you for that because I could not be as uh, verbose. Oh. <laughs> verbose means I talk too much, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, uh, it is eight o'clock. So I will just uh, throw this one more question at, at you. Um, 
we'll we'll save uh, her grace Grace Helga's question for for some other time. Her second question, um, but this question comes from our own very beautiful and very sweet princess of the mist, uh, Princess Sarah, and she asks, "When will you both become weasties?" Now, weasties, if you've never heard this term before, um, we 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 have a uh, the West out here. We we have the uh, a large love for our <clears throat> Eastern counterparts. Uh, and so we lure them out here with sunshine and avocados. <laughs> uh, and then once they come here and they like it, we dub them Weasties uh, because they're now West Easties. And then we just keep them coming back and back and back. So gents, I mean, when all of this plague is gone, we have some fine events out here. We'd love to have you out to come and play in our backyard. <laughs> For the record, I'm, despite the mistake you made, Logan, I'm an Eldemurian. I'm not in these. Yes. Seas. But I spent a lot of time in these. But, and but I, you would still be over an there. honorary Weastie. Yeah, I know. I love you guys. Um, so you could be a well My intent is. <laughs> I love it. I love it, actually. Um, so that's one of the things. So now that I'm retired from the military, I have a lot more flexibility as to my travel. And my goal is to try to get to those events that I have missed up till now. So, um, Gulf Wars. We got to Gulf Wars when we were uh, when my wife and I were Prince and Princess. Um, are, we're we're going back every chance we get. There's no question. Um, but that being said, there are events that I want to make further west beyond that. Of course, we're one corner to the other corner of the North America. It's not a trivial task. Um, however, our goal is to do that. Um, I would love to make it to pretty much every war in our society at some point. Uh, it may not happen right away. But our goal is to do that. Um, I have made a ton of friends in the West. I love my Westy friends. Helga, despite the fact that she traps me with evil questions, is still <laughs> one of my favorite peeps in the whole Um, and Hans kicked my ass 30 ways from Sunday at Go For us during pickups. Like I could not let <clears> a stick on it. I'd have been better off with a shotgun. There's no question about that. Um, so I want I want more of that so I can not suck as much next time. Um, so, yeah, there, there's going to come a time when I can do that. And I really look forward to um, spending time with, you know, every one of the people that I meet in all these places. Because, like I said from the beginning, people is what, what's kissed me here. People is what's going to keep me here until I'm dead. And uh Every time I go to a different event that I've never been to before, somebody sparks that excitement in me again, and I just want to do it more and more and more. Yeah. For me, um, I've been wanting to be a Weasty for um, <laughs> quite a few years now. Um, the thing that's ever kept me back was not lack of want, um, more lack of um, time availability, and more importantly, the finances to fly my ass all the way to the other side of the country. Um, but yeah, no, um, I have been extremely jealous of my uh, friends and chosen family that um, make it out there, um, have made it out there, make it out there on a regular basis. And trust me, it is not for lack of want. I have seen the pictures, heard the stories over and over and over and over and uh green eye envy jealous want bad <laughs> yes please thank you um yeah no it's not for lack of want it's just a matter of stars aligned um to be the weasty wearing the bright yellow and uh enjoying uh all of your company well i i here, will here. tell you this the, the west is a very hospitable uh kingdom uh, yeah. shoot, they've taken really good care of me. And, um, if, if you can find a way to get out here, we will find a way to take care of you in every other way imaginable. So let us know. Absolutely. Well, warn us that you're coming. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, thank you so much, both of you for being on the show this tonight. I hope you had a good time. I know that I did. Um, I wish we could keep on going on forever, but we're already a little bit over our hour. Um, before we go, uh, this is something I, I normally ask at the, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, there he is. Had to wait to the very end. Thank God. 
<laughs> uh, before we go, uh, I just wanted to know if there are any other shows, books, movies, music, uh, anything that you would suggest for our viewers uh, and all the unbelts out there, you know, something that gets you going, something that you like to watch that, that makes you happy <laughs> and gets you into the SGA mood. Um, yeah, no, for me, I, I, I don't have any suggestions off the top of my head. Um, and I heard that question once before and I'm like, how would I answer that? And I'm like, I'm still at a loss. <laughs> I, I, I have to apologize. I, and I did actually give me some thought prior to this. And um, yeah, no, I, I got nothing. No problem. Um, so I can tell you what. what... Oh. That, was, that was awesome. Oh. And of course. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was perfect. <laughs> so uh, while we're waiting, for hopefully him to get back. Uh, I will give mine. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, there wait. you are. I'm sorry, guys. Yes. We made it for the whole hour, at least. That's the best I can do. Um, oh, that's fantastic. So, so what I was going to say was, uh, for me, what I like doing is, I, I totally YouTube the shit out of, out of fight videos, out of event videos, out of, yeah, you know, I'll, agree. I'll watch... I'll watch my crown stuff over and over again because I like watching to see the mistakes I make because I saw them. Um, but the, the things I did right, and I saw those too. Um, I like watching fights from people I've never seen before. I like watching Jade fights. I like watching East Crown fights. I like watching, you know, I will go down and watch those things so I can, you know, to some degree put it in the memory bank, but mostly because it just makes me hungry, makes me want to eat it more, makes me want to fight more, makes me want to pal, yeah. makes me want to do all those things, makes me want to meet people because I saw them in a, an event and I went, like, that was really cool. I need to hug that person at some point. I need to meet their majesty's West and see what's on the inside of the crown for real by myself. You know, that's the thing that I want to do. And so that's how I do that. Now there's, there's books you can read hundred uh, percent. Duke Finbar does some amazing work with translating some of the really cool chivalry uh, scriptures and stuff like that. The books that have come out there that have been that, that night sort of piece. Um, He's way smarter than me. Oh my God, that guy's brilliant. Um, however, uh, for me, it's it's the passion of the people that I that I actually see do something so cool that I go, I need to shake that person's hand, not because I got to see what they did, but because I got to see a video of what they did. And it was so freaking cool that that I want to give them that kudos. They don't need it. It's probably Dukes or so and so who's like rain for the seventh yeah. time and is going to kick my ass because I said you shouldn't rain seven times, um, or it's or it's somebody else that they already know they're there. They've already you know achieved that level of whatever they're aiming for. But I want to do that because it'll make me feel better. It'll make me feel like I've at least contributed something to their whatever that development is of whatever their magic is. Yeah, I find myself uh, watching a lot of YouTube. Um, but when you ask the question, my brain defaults to Hollywood movie or, you know, books and stuff. I don't really, you know, but yeah, no, watch the YouTube, watch the fights, break them down. There's some really great people out there that break fights down um, and uh, they're fun to watch. But yeah, no, I have to agree with you on that one, brother. Absolutely. Um, some of my favorites, uh, SCA Coaches Corner is really good. They always have a bunch of good folks. Um, Brannos. Brannos is a god. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fan <laughs> fantastic. Uh, the sisters interviews. Um, there's there's a barony who's been, uh, and I can't remember what it is, and I meant to write it down before the show, but they've been pumping out. Um, they've made like a video library of classes and talks, and um, uh, Hel Helga did one. Uh, what what I can't even remember what it was on, but like they're Shoot. just they're just grinding them out. Yeah, and they're and they're 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 putting them all out, and they've been uh, pumping them out um, quite a bit. Uh, of course, I talk about it now. I can't remember it in my head because you know damage. But we will definitely put them in the comments later and throw them on uh, the Ask Tonight's live site. Uh, so that you guys can check this stuff out because it's they're doing a really great job. Uh, Backyard Basics with Duke Mark. 
uh, is awesome if you want to learn some like real badass longsword stuff. Uh, yeah, really, really cool. Um, and then, of course, my absolute favorite show on the face of the planet and our sibling show between two peers. Uh, if you if you want to have fun on a Friday night, and you know it's a pandemic, so what the hell else are you gonna do? Uh, grab yourself a uh, a beverage or two or six, um, and watch the show and join the drinking game because yeah. one, yeah. two, you'll, you'll, lots, many, many. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Uh, but it's a really good time. So uh, tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, what's that? That's 10 p.m. out your guys' way. Um, so uh, that's about it. Oh, wait. Of course. I always forget. So do you like this show? Do us a favor. Go ahead and flat snap the hell out of that like button because uh, the more likes that we get, uh, the more that we get pushed out there, the more people get to see the show. You can also support us on Patreon, um, right down there, patreon.com slash KK Productions. If you want to give us a little monetary smack on the butt, um, or if you're not comfortable with that, a monetary high five is also okay. Um, just no monetary cup shots, because that's where I draw the line. Yeah, they're, they're not good. I mean, anyway, so... Uh, Basically, all that does is it helps us get things like, uh, you know, new microphones, my new earbuds, so that I don't have to, you know, wear the, the, the giant, ugly headphones anymore, if you guys have noticed. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so you get to see this, more of this beautiful, gorgeous face and my crazy beard tonight. So thank you again, gentlemen, for being on the show. Uh, thank you to everybody out there watching. We will see you next week right here on Ask Tonight's Live. Good night. Thanks. Thank you.